Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. In the first part of my presentation, I would like to tell you something about the background. Since the 1950s, experimental studies investigated the visibility of administration of anti-cancer drugs in pulmonary circle by isolated lamp perfusion. A very high level of local regional pharmacodynamic activity without systemic toxicity was demonstrated. In the year 2000, BART performed ILP consisting of thoracotomy, surgical cannulation of pulmonary artery and veins, thus realizing an extracorporeal circulation. In 2002, during open surgery, Schneider used an angiographic catheter to perform both ILP and pulmonary taste, after which he compared both outcomes of these two methods. He demonstrated that with the pulmonary taste achieved a concentration, a local concentration of carboplatin 5.4 times higher than ILP. This important publication marks a significant milestone in interventional radiology because Focal, for the first time in humans, carried out pulmonary taste using percutaneously an occlusion balloon catheter plus starch spherix, which, as you know, dissolved within seven minutes. He employed mitomycin C and lipiodol. This phase one study is very important to assess the visibility in humans percutaneously of pulmonary taste with promising results. As we know, RFA or lung tumors has proved to be safe and visible with interesting results in unresectable patients. But looking at the table of many important series of patients concerning complete response rate after lung RFA, you can see that there is a significant difference among the results. Particularly, these two values highlighted in red are too far apart to be scientifically acceptable. This can be explained by comparing the range of tumors diameters. The smaller the diameter, the better the results. On the other hand, in this table, you can see that tumor diameters are a bit over two centimeters. And nevertheless, they are not the desired and homogeneous results. In fact, at least a third of patients, and more too, occurred local tumor progression. The difficulty to obtain better results depends on these two factors, heat sink effect and alveolar ventilation, which, as you know, lead to a consistent cooling tissue around the tumor, as you can appreciate in this diagram. Iraqi demonstrated that the most important variable for local progression after RFA in lung tumors is tumor size over two centimeters. The larger the diameter, the worse the results. And the bear in his randomized trials assessed that complete ablation of lung tumors after RFA was achieved with a percentage of 90% only in tumors smaller than two centimeters. In fact, lower success rate occurred within tumors larger than two and three centimeters. Finally, we remember with Inoue that combining techniques such as 
RFA, radiotherapy, and intravenous chemotherapy, it is possible to obtain much better results in survival rate. So considering all these data, we design our clinical study that named double track therapy, which has recently been published. What is double track therapy? DTT consists of two steps. The first is segmental pulmonary arterial chemoembolization with drug eluting beads, which, as you know, are non degradable. The step two is RFA, 48 hours after space. Concerning the purpose, we really want to obtain a wide white infection of the ventilating lung tissue surrounding the tumor, so that it is possible to have a lower value of impedance tissue and consequently a greater progression of radiofrequency wave in the periphery of the tumor and around it. This led to a larger surface emerging thanks to a synergies higher radiofrequency, higher temperature, higher absorption of drugs loaded on beads. So it is possible to treat also microscopic daughter nodules around the nodules. In this picture, you can see our new angel suite with the patient lying on the table in the beginning of a space session. We always performed percutaneous right subclavian venous access and uh, placed the patients with their arms raised and bent at the elbow. In this uh, PA perspective angiogram of the left lung, you can see at the bottom the arteries that uh, fed the segment containing the tumor. The principal feeding artery of the segment is identified by comparing multiplanar reformation CT scans with angiographic images. On the right, you can see the devascularization of the embolized segment. In the same patient, in a lateral view, you can see the same segment before and after embolization. In our first phase one study, we used these drugs as recommended by our oncologists, depending on the tumors, the histology of the tumors that we treated. But uh, actually, in the phase two study, we used only doxorubicin and uh, irinotecan loaded on eluting beads with a diameter larger than 200 microns. This um, diagram shows you all the type of the chance that we didn't have to pass through. And now I would like to show you a video clip concerning the working of this chance and the method that we employed. The purpose of this methodology is to obtain a white infarction in the ventilated lung tissue surrounding the tumor so that it will be possible to achieve a large safety margin and a homogeneous tumor necrosis. For this reason, we remember the different shunts which work in the lung. The blue pulmonary shunts, which are normally opened in the upper lobes, provide a reserve for stressful situations. When the body is relaxed, this AV bypass of pulmonary blood leads to a smaller total volume of the ventilating lung parenchyma of about 30%. During hyperventilation, these pulmonary shunts close and the AV bypass stops. So the whole volume of the lung is perfused and ventilated. On the other hand, the red bronchial shunts, which are normally closed, open only when there is a drop in pressure in the right chambers of the heart and or in the arterial pulmonary vascular bed such as in cardiac failure and in many pulmonary chronic diseases. 
all these vascular shunts consist of smooth muscular cells and work as valves with a maximum inner diameter of 200 micron for pulmonary network and 325 micron for bronchial arteries. The embolization with eluting beads through the pulmonary arteries aims at reducing the heat sink effect around the tumor. The vascular factor is eliminated by the embolization of the whole segment containing the tumor. The prevention of the pulmonary blood flow leads to a sudden opening of the bronchial shunts, which causes the loading of the alveoli with transudate fluid, edema, proteins, and macrophagic cells. The infarction of the lung tissue surrounding the tumor eliminates the alveolar ventilation. This reduces the electrical impedance tissue and allows a good progression of RF waves, which are subsequently applied. The final result is a high deposition of RF energy, which leads to a wide tumor necrosis with a large safety margin. The high temperature around the tumor promotes the absorption of the drugs loaded on the eluting beads. After three to four weeks, the pulmonary infarction is completely resolved. 48 hours after space, we performed RFA under CT guide and general anesthesia. Among inclusion criteria, we highlight tumor's diameter up to 5 cm. In this phase 1 study, we enrolled 17 patients. The most frequent histology was CRC metastasis. The median value of tumor's diameter was three centimeter. In this diagram, you can see that in combination therapy, we always achieved a lower electrical impedance value of the tissue, of the ventilated tissue, compared with radiofrequency alone. Among major complications, we reported pneumothorax with an uh, usual percentage or a little more, and occasionally a bronchopleural fistula. In this slide, you can see an example of non-small cell lung cancer before treatment with CT enhancement, the positive picture of PET, and the picture of ventilating lung PET that we perform the day before the space. During space in the middle, you can see the stasis of the blood pulmonary flow due to the embolized beads. The day after, we again perform ventilating lung spat. So it is possible to appreciate that the postolateral segment in the left inferior lobe containing the tumor is excluded by ventilation. 48 hours after space, we performed RFA and subsequently CT scan. Here is uh, the absence of enhancement. And uh, 23 months after the whole treatment, we achieved the negative picture of PET CT. Another example, with a colon rectal cancer metastasis before treatment. During the step two, with RFA. And subsequently, with CT, you can see the large safety margin. 27 months after the whole treatment, we had the persistence of the pe negative picture of PET CT. Our preliminary results are that we achieved technical success in all cases and recorded local tumor progression of 21 percent 
in tumors between 3 and 5 centimeters and 0% in those between 2 and 3 centimeters. We achieved complete response rate of 65%. We conclude that uh, treating lung tumors in unresectable patients, we can combine segmental pulmonary arterial chemoembolization with RFA, so achieving a larger soft emerging and a more homogeneous tumor necrosis due to increased conductivity of perinodural tissue and potentiated local drug absorption thanks to hyperthermia. We named this technique double track because it is both a physical and chemical synergistic modality to ablate lung tumors. Thank you for your listening.